morning, everyone. This is really great to hear all the chatter. I'm just so excited. A lot of you know each other already, and some of you are making new friends already, and that's exciting. That's, uh, in fact, one of the, the purposes of this event is to bring pastors from all across LA and Orange County together to just share with each other uh, just your own lives, but also what you're doing in this area of equipping the saints for ministry. Uh, welcome, everybody. It's, uh, we're delighted to have you here. We've been looking forward to this event for a, a long time. And uh, I want to start by thanking the Kern Foundation for making this event possible, uh, for recognizing the value of bringing pastors from two counties together uh, for the purpose of uh, iron sharpening iron, hearing what other churches are doing, hearing from people outside of our community, uh, getting some ideas from some of the experts in this field. Uh, for those who aren't that familiar with Biola University, it, Biola was an acronym, still is, I suppose, stands for Bible Institute of Los Angeles. It was started in 1908. Uh, co-founded by uh, the, the founder of uh, Union Oil, Lyman Stewart. Uh, he was also the founder of Union Rescue Mission uh, around the same period, but a devout Christian businessman who had a burden to equip Christians uh, for ministry in all walks of life. He wanted to prepare people for, with, uh, with biblical teaching, and in all their spheres, whether it's uh, business, engineering, uh, the medical field teaching. And uh, so Biola started as an institute uh, out of a church in downtown Los Angeles and eventually became a college and, and now we have Biola University. Um, but this uh, ethos of equipping everyone for ministry uh, still lingers on. In fact, if you uh, go to the School of Business while you're here on campus, you'll see emblazoned on our wall, in, in the tile itself, it, said, it says business as ministry. Uh, and it just bears witness to the fact that we, we believe, we meaning all of us here at Biola, believe we're preparing everybody for ministry, not just business people, not just pastors. Uh, we're preparing everybody here, all our, all our students. Uh, so why are we here? Well, I already shared that uh, we, we want to learn from each other, hear from you, hear from the speakers, and uh, walk away from this meeting at the end of the day with uh, better ideas, more inspiration on what our churches can do individually, but perhaps even collectively. Uh, there was a recent article in the uh, Christian Christianity Today, I think November issue, Amy Sherman, one of our speakers today was the author of it, but she profiles uh, a network in Cincinnati that has about 5,000 uh, people, and I don't know how many churches that represents, but it cuts across denominations and ethnic groups, and, and uh, this, this group that's having a, a pretty significant impact in the city of, of Cincinnati, and, and uh, there's no reason why we couldn't do something similar uh, here in Los Angeles and Orange County as well. Um, I want to share a personal story, and, and it's something I haven't really thought much about recently until Easter. Uh, my wife decided for this Easter that uh, she wanted to do lamb or a rack of lamb. Not the way we ordinarily celebrate Easter, but uh, my daughter ha has acquired a taste for lamb, and so my wife thought, let's, let's uh, try this lamb, rack of lamb recipe. So the day before, the Saturday before Easter, I went to our usual grocery store and looked for the lamb. There, I couldn't find any. I went to the butcher and asked, do you have any lamb back there? And, and he said, it didn't arrive. Our, our shipment didn't arrive. It was supposed to be here this morning. Uh, if you come back tomorrow morning, I promise you we will have uh, your lamb. And I instantly had flashbacks of a former life of mine uh, when I was in the trucking industry. Of course, I'm being facetious there, but uh, prior career in the trucking industry. Uh, when I, I, I was a Marine for six years, left the Marines, and uh, 
started working first just as a front desk clerk receptionist person in a trucking company. Frozen food was the specialty, frozen and fresh uh, food. And uh, eventually I moved into the dispatching, uh, then started helping in the accounting office, eventually was running the accounting office. And, and by the time the, the general manager died, uh, I was his right-hand man. And, um, and so I was the natural choice for the new GM. But uh, I, I remember the, the unrelenting pressure every week. There's uh, Vons is running a sale on fresh pork or, or Stater Brothers has, has some sort of promotion going and your driver, you find out, has overslept or broke down somewhere in the Colorado uh, Rockies or the grapevine or it's a fresh load of lettuce and the refrigeration unit just conked out and they're in the shop getting their refrigeration unit repaired and and the unrelenting stress uh, of that and um, in the industry in trucking it's very highly regulated and truckers are only supposed to drive a few hours I mean they have a set number of hours they're allowed to drive per day uh, and it's, it's tough to make a living if you stay within those limits. And so what a lot of drivers do is keep two sets of logbooks, one for if they get asked by a police officer and one for uh, the one they want to get paid on. Um, and also there's pretty prevalent, at least back when I was in the industry, uh, drug use, amphetamine, you know, some drivers just driving just round the clock trying to meet these deadlines. And um, it was kind of a don't ask, don't tell kind of situation for me. Uh, I, I knew these things were happening and, and frankly there were times when I was, I was grateful almost that they were pulling out all the stops to, to make my customer happy. Uh, but as a new believer, I didn't feel right about this either, and I didn't know what to do about it. Um, I remember I did have opportunities uh, to defend my faith in the workplace. I'm, I'm, you know, I have no regrets in that area, uh, especially when the general manager was close to dying. We didn't know he was close to dying at the time, but I was able to speak into his life a bit towards the end. Um, but uh, so that part, uh, you know, no regrets in that regard. But there was this other part that it's like, ah, oh, it just it doesn't feel good. And eventually I, I went to a startup trucking company and, and then another trucking company. And, and uh, each one presented new ethical challenges for me as a Christian. And um, never once did I consider uh, going to my pastor or did, did my church ever offer a support group of any kind? Uh, it never even crossed my mind. This, you know, I'm talking about 25 or 30 years ago. And, and um, things have changed a lot though. I think, I mean, just based on my own observations over the last 30 years, it feels like a sea change almost. Uh, a recent Barna uh, study has surveyed pastors and they discovered that um, uh, the vast majority of pastors want to help their membership learn how to integrate their faith in their work. However, the bad news is that two thirds of pastors feel they're not doing it well. Okay, so, but there's at least a desire. So I see the silver lining there. There's the, the desire, which I think 25 or 30 years ago, most pastors would have sort of felt like that was off limits, uh, what you do at work. Um, another thing this, this survey found was that uh, half of church going, working Americans view their work as important to God. And they presented this as, as very negative news, bad news. It's only half of Christians feel their work is important to God. But I actually see the glass is half full. I, uh, wow, that's, I think that's an improvement from where we were. Um, so uh, in, in any event, uh, what we want to do today is hear from some of the experts who have studied this deeply. Uh, in fact, let me grab a book here. Uh, 
our, our first speaker will be Dr. David Miller, uh, author of a book called God at Work, The History and Promise of the Faith and Work Movement. And uh, he documents, as it says, the, the history of this and what he found. Actually, one of the things, I, one of my favorite parts of the book is, is possibly the driest part, is the history part. <laughs> it's, it's great if you want to go to sleep. It's okay. oh, no. <laughs> What he, what he discovers is that this, this kind of ebbs and flows, that the church has had this pattern of, of uh, lay people wanting to bring their, integrate their faith and work and, and uh, pastors wanting to help but not knowing how to engage that. And so more often than not, it ends up outside of the church in parachurch organizations or separate networks outside of the church, which is frankly what, what we're seeing now is a lot of this stuff is happening outside of our churches. Uh, the pastors are supportive of it, but they don't know how to, how to engage it. Uh, and, and over time, it tends to peter out. And, and then 20 years later, a new generation of business people, and you see this interest again. And so, uh, by his count, we're in probably our third wave now of, of interest in this area, and it just brings up the urgency of, of we can't just keep this outside of the church. We have to somehow get our churches to embrace it and engage it, get the pastors to, because if the pastors don't stay on it, I think the membership eventually it starts to fade away if, if they're not hearing it from the pulpit on a regular basis. Um, and just another quote, this is from Amy Sherman's new book, uh, Amy, Amy will be introduced later this afternoon, but uh, she says, congregants in our pews need to know that they should and can connect their workday world and their faith. So often they feel that God is just a Sunday God. Sometimes we as church leaders exhort our people to live out live for Christ's kingdom, but fail to explain adequately what that means for their lives Monday through Friday. Uh, we must do a better job of inspiring our members about the role they can play in the mission of God and equipping them to live missionally through their vocation. So uh, many people recognizing that we have a, a, a unique opportunity in this time and place now, uh, we're at another peak, it seems, of, of interest in this area and the urgency of getting churches engaged. So uh, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the Kern Foundation for recognizing the importance of, of this moment in time and this movement and for being willing to support that. Uh, so uh, to help us think through that, you've already heard David Miller will, will come up next. Uh, he will then be followed by a panel of, of uh, lay people uh, who will share a bit about their own experience of bringing faith to work and what that looks like in their context. Uh, then we'll have Doug Spada, who is the founder of Work Life and uh, an organization that that's whole purpose is to help churches uh, equip their saints for ministry and then Amy Sherman who has also spent the better part of her career doing the same thing will will close out the afternoon so just a word on logistics uh, before we get started uh, uh, restrooms are right outside this door on the right just immediately outside the door so they're easy to find uh, lunch will be provided in here. You may have already seen the buffet table set up on the side. And uh, hopefully when they set up, it won't be too disruptive. The, the, uh, the plates and silverware and everything are already there, so it shouldn't be. Uh, we also have an event this evening. If, you're, <laughs> if you haven't had enough already by 5 o'clock, uh, Doug Spada will be doing another presentation for a different audience. Uh, Today's presentation is targeted mainly for pastors, but tonight will be targeted more for regular working people. So it'll be uh, a different presentation, a different audience, and so you're certainly welcome to, 
to uh, join us for that as well. That starts here at 6.30. Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.